Now, what was the, uh, the thought process behind you picking your team and how did you sort of the team you eventuated with compared to what you were sort of aiming for to start with? Yeah, I put a little bit of effort into it, actually canvassed the opinions of a few of our boys here. Andy Brayshaw and I sort of went through the list and decided who we wanted. Um, but then when we actually got to the draft night, I sort of just had a preference list of 1 to 40 who I wanted um, and then saw who the other captains took and ended up with a pretty healthy team, I think. A little bit top heavy, but um, <laughs> but I think it's a pretty healthy team. Do you have um, a respect for recruiters now, having gone through a draft and seeing how on, on the clock you've got to pick best available? Yeah, always had respect for recruiters, but with the shot clock, um, and you've got your heart set on a certain amount of players that you can't get sometimes. Yeah, there is certainly some pressure in those stakes, but the steal card was interesting where we got to steal a player from another team. That adds a new element. Maybe that'll come into AFL at some point. Maybe. <laughs> What's it like to be the number one pick? Oh, oh, no, it was actually pretty funny. Um, had, a little, had, had, <laughs> had a little joke with a couple of boys just mucking around. But yeah, obviously, um, Eddie had the first pick. And uh, Shawnee Bergwijn actually rang me up. He's like, Eddie, make sure you pick Hilly first. You know, he's, he's our main runner. But just having a little laugh about it. So it's only, yes, it's a pick for AFLX. And we had the first pick. Is, is, this, of, is, is, sorry, no. is, is this what this game is about, run, do you think? Oh, well, it depends how you play the game, I guess. I reckon Nathan's probably got to try to um, isolate his players and have one-on-one -on -one contests down the line and trying to outmark us. So, um, yeah, well, obviously I played it last year and it was um, pretty fast up and down, but I guess it's the way you control the footy. You can slow it down if you want to. So um, I reckon that's what uh, Nathan and his group be, be trying to do. Did you enjoy it? Did you feel like it no, go on, mate, go on. <laughs> did, you, did you enjoy it last year? Did you feel like it was suited to you? Oh, yeah, I, I enjoy it. Even when we play mini games of footy here, I love it as well. So it's just a, that fast-paced footy up and down the ground. So um, you do get pretty tired quickly and you need those interchange after, you know, th you know four or five minutes. So, um, But it's, yeah, awesome. Love it. What do you say to the critics, Brad, that say, you know, there's a chance of injury? Like, why do you want to be involved? Oh, well, we can get injured in, in NAB Cup too. So, um, you know, it's... It's leading into now. Now cuts only a few weeks away as well. So, um, you know, oh, you got a lot of these good players out there playing. JLT series. Oh, JLT. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, JLT. Um, but yeah, you can get injured at training as well. So, opportunity to play against all these great players is, you know, it's got to be um, an unreal experience and one I'm looking forward to. The all Indigenous team. What do you think we can expect from them? Um, yeah, well, I reckon it's going to be pretty fast pace and um, probably trying to get the ball out the back as fast as we can and let the let the little guys get to work and um, use their speed and skill. So. I'll be pretty exciting, I reckon. Is there anyone in particular keen to play with? Um, yeah, it'd be cool playing with like his, um, Eddie Betts, the captain. Um, you know, he's a he's a star of the game. Um, a little Tip and Woody would be good to play alongside with, and uh, all the players there are going to be like I said, it's going to be exciting and a fast-paced game on on our side, I reckon. Nathan, tell us why people should get excited about this. Well, I'm just having a look through my team here, and you've got Bontempelli, Bontempelli, Pendlebury, Rance, Cameron, Heaney, Coniglio. They're some of the biggest names in the AFL all going to be playing in one team together. Um, the games go for 20 minutes, so naturally there's going to be an element of fast-paced, high-energy, high-octane football about it. It is just footy. It's nothing else. It's just footy. The shape of the oval is a bit different. The scoring system is a bit different, but everything's stripped back. It's just AFL footy. So uh, We've seen a bit of a turning of the tide now that the teams have been announced. There was initial scepticism, but we're seeing already people are starting to warm up to it. And again, this is for kids. This is for that younger age demographic. We're trying to attract a new audience. Um, no one's trying to destroy the game of AFL as it is. The game's pretty perfect, if you ask me. But this just adds another element and hopefully some excitement to that, the January, February period of of the pre-season, so I think you should be excited. I'm just looking at a couple of other, um, I guess, types of sports, basketball, obviously, three on three as well. Do you think this is going to pick up that, that kind of hype and, and give that extra excitement? I think so, uh, and time will tell. The AFL are committed to this for a number of years, and, and they'll continue to attract the best players. And as you see, um, there's already players texting me that didn't get picked up saying, I wish I had been involved. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what the concept looks like on February 22nd. I don't think... We should be sitting here looking at what that night is as the finished product. This will evolve year on year uh, and get more and more excitement and hype and energy. And um, It's not going anywhere. A game of AFL is pretty good as it is, but I think if we can continue to have different looks 
at the start of the season and at the end of the season, it's only good for the game. I don't think so you picked up any Dockers teammates in that, is that right? <laughs> if any he of probably them... would have picked me if he could have. <laughs> 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 if any of them hit you up about why. Sean, Sean Darcy actually said he's still waiting for his pick, but I think he's a number of years off getting a Guernsey at AFLX. <laughs> uh, Dave Mundy was one of the only ones available, and um, I already had Josh Kennedy, Bontempelli, Pendlebury, big mids, and I think Dave's probably sick of me anyway, so... Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting not playing with any of my own teammates, but that's the excitement of the concept. If you cast your mind forward five years, what can you see this being in five years? I've definitely cast my mind forward five years when I'm sort of on the end of my career. I see this being something where there's current players, there's players that are recently retired, there may even be amateur level players who are kicking 200 goals down at Amos, where uh, a franchise owns a team, picks up the best 13, 14 players from around the country that they can put together and plays in a series over four or five weeks. Similar to what the Big Bash has done, similar to what other sports are doing around the world, um, I think this has some legs and, and time will tell. Does it have any international application, do you think? I, I mean, that's the, the dream, to be able to take this game and share it with the rest of the world. Um, it's a big dream uh, and first we have the challenge of building the concept domestically. But I think so. If the best players are playing, then it's got more of a chance. And the appeal with the big bash is that there's lots of wickets, lots of sixes, it's entertaining for kids. Do you think this game has got that, like that pull factor for kids, the, the X factor that they can latch onto and get excited about, irrelevant of the results? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be coaching my team to really play with flair and let themselves go. Alex Rance texted me this morning and said, I can't offer much in the way of aerial support, and I encourage him to take as many hangs at fullback as he can. Um, <laughs> There's a 10-point goal opportunity from 50, so I'll be encouraging my players to have as many pings from long range as they can. Do the things that at um, club land we're encouraged not to do because it's not defensively the best way to play footy. So this will look different, and the idea is to create as much excitement as we can for the people that are watching. No, Freo fans worried about your elbow. Can you put their minds at ease about playing in this? My elbow's fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. I'd put it in the category of a blister or... Um, a broken toenail, there's nothing wrong with it. So there's no chance that can you know, impact your JLT or round one or anything like that, your, this, this injury? There's always a chance of things happening, mate, I will say. <laughs> yeah. So the same question that was put to Brad earlier, Nathan, you know, you're this club's best player and one of the best players in the comp. Why should Freo fans not be worried about you being suffering a serious injury in this game? Why should... Can you rephrase that question, please? Well, Fremantle fans will be worried about you suffering a serious injury in this game. What can you... Put it in context, the prospect of injury, playing something like this. Yeah. Um, so AFLX will likely be a non-contact style of play because it's so quick, it only goes for 20 minutes. Um, the best players in the game are playing and they're better with ball in hand rather than tackling and slowing the game down. Tomorrow we'll go out and train and do a 40-minute team training component where there's maximum tackling and pressure. So there's more risk of me getting injured in regular season, regular pre-season team training than there is in AFLX. Do you think once it starts and obviously you're playing the games that people are going to ease up on that criticism? Oh, I don't know. People are entitled to their opinion. <laughs> and, and most of the opinions these days are garnished from social media. Twitter and Facebook are probably the main two. Um, and Instagram. And um, it's popular to be, to be negative on these sorts of things, particularly for that age group of 15-year-olds plus. Kids love it. Mums and dads love it, and we'll see what happens after the games are played on Feb 22nd. Do you think it can help, like, help have a, a different kind of conversation about footy going through the pre-season, obviously take it away from individual clubs a little bit and, and talk about footy in a different different aspect? Right. So is that sorry again? Like, <laughs> obviously having the AFLX um, competition, do you think it brings a different kind of conversation um, to footy and obviously playing in the pre-season and, and keeping the conversation going oh, yeah. outside of the yeah, well, it's obviously a bit of a sort of similar game, but it's obviously played in a different way and, and whatnot. And um, you're probably not going to have all these big stars playing in the one team. So obviously there's going to be a little bit different. And, um, you know, being a kid as well, if I was be able to go to Eddie Had and watch all these stars play against each other, um, you know, I'll take the opportunity to go and watch. And, um, you know, it's got to be an amazing night. And um, to have such big names and so many of them on, under the same roof, it's got to be, yeah, awesome. Brad, can we just ask about your brother, Stephen, before yep. you go? Um, how's he tracking? How's he feeling? Uh, 
to be honest, Luke would probably know more than me. Um, I know he started started running. Um, I'm not too sure how far away he's going to be. Um, but, yeah, I've seen him out on the track running, but not, not 100% sure where he's at. What about his mindset? How's he feeling about it? Does he feel like the surgery will hopefully solve all those issues that he's had? Yeah, well, I think yeah, that's the that's the aim, and that's what everyone's hoping for. And um, yeah, we're gonna have to wait wait till he gets back at the track and start training, get back into footy. But yeah, that's what what he's hoping for, and um, I'm sure that's that's what's gonna happen. And he's been around for long enough to you know he's got the right mindset, and um, he's gonna get put his head down and get to work. Nathan, who's the opposition player you'll be most concerned about on February 22? Oh, that's a good question. I think Brad's one of them. Um, Nathan reckons he's going to try and do a hanger on me. And <laughs> that's my <laughs> and my plan is to have a bounce looking back, smiling at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a few. Uh, I mean, hopefully I get to come up against Patrick at some point in the middle, Patrick Dangerfield. Um, Rory Sloan is a, a player on the inside that I don't really want to be matched up against because he is one that goes pretty hard at the footy. But... Uh, I'm not really concerned about playing against anyone. I'm more excited at the opportunity that we all get to play on the same field and have a bit of fun and enjoy each other's company. And, um, and the element of preparing together. The Wednesday we'll train together, so we all get to look at what each other's preparation is like. And when you're isolated in club land, you get put in a slot, but now we get access to the best players in Australia and see what they're up to. Question to both of you, and Nat, I know you've spoken in the past about how sort of the appeal of this is to play with the best of the best and say state of origin wise, you've sort of you've represented WA at under 18s level. Why do you think that this game has got the buy-in from the best of the best? And, and at, maybe at this stage the public is a little bit sceptical, whereas state, state of origin the public seems to be bought in, but uh, at, at this stage there doesn't seem to be that buy-in from the, the best of the best. Why do you think this game's got that buy-in? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I, as a player I'm not overly interested in playing state of origin unless the concept got up and running and the best players were playing. So doesn't really matter what it looks like. My main focus is playing for Fremantle and winning our club of premiership. And most of my preparation, 99% of my preparation is going towards that. Um, the small element is having a bit of fun with this AFLX, only a small element. Um, but whatever the concept was, if the best players were playing, people would come and play. You lead buy in if, if the AFL wanted to generate a state of origin concept, do you feel like the best players would buy in? Oh, at this stage, probably not. We've tried it, it lost interest. These things come and go. State of origin will come back again at some point, but um, yeah, again, it's low on the agenda for players. They want to play and represent their clubs first and foremost. Um, Brad, quick question for you. Obviously, playing in a team with, with two Eagles, I've heard that there's a bit of a healthy rivalry here in Perth with Dockers and Eagles. Are you looking forward to getting out there with Philly and, and Lewis as well? Yeah, it would be awesome. Um, I've played with Lewis before in the um, Indigenous All-Star game, um, been around West Coast blokes on, on the Indigenous camp. So, you know, with, with the Indigenous boys, we've been with each other. We prepare for a game before. So, um, like any other, any other game with them, um, it's got to be the same. We'll, we'll have a bit of fun there and, yeah, it'd be awesome. I've never played alongside Willie. I've known Willie for a long time, um, playing footy with Cyril in the past. Um, so, yeah, it'd be awesome to play, play alongside him. And he's, you know, he's one of the most exciting small forwards. So, yeah, definitely looking forward for the, for the opportunity. Yeah, awesome. Um, I'm not sure who designed it, but I did see Neville Jetta put up that he had a bit of an input to it. Um, the jumper looks awesome. Uh, it's a bit tight on me at this one, so hopefully I'll get one a little bit bigger. But yeah, the design's uh, amazing. Love it. How do you go with the boomerang? How do I go? Um, I haven't thrown one for a little while, but uh, I reckon I'll be right. <laughs>